To say anything about such an indomitable colossus as Sardar Patel, one of our founding fathers, would be gratuitous. Often referred to as the Iron Man and as the Bismarck of India, Sardar Patel's contributions go beyond being the cartographer of immediate post-independence India. He had a profound impact on our constitution, as well as chairman of the Advisory Committee on Fundamental Rights, Minorities, and Tribal and Excluded Areas in the Constituent Assembly. More recently, three years ago, the Planning Commission published the report of its 17-member expert group on development challenges in extremist affected areas. It gave the historical, political, social, and economic context to the issue, reviewed government efforts to deal with the problem, and recommended a number of key policy and program measures and changes to visibly and vastly reduce, if not totally eradicate, the effects of left-wing extremism in different states. Please permit me to inject a personal note here. As a student of India's political dynamics, I have always had an intellectual interest in this subject. But over the last seven years, my involvement has grown and has become increasingly more direct. First, since 2004, when I became a member of parliament from Andhra Pradesh, I have used my MP lads funds mostly in Adilabad, Varangal, and Khammam, three Naxal-affected districts, to strengthen women's self-help group organizations and reduce the trust deficit between tribal communities and civil administration. Second, between June 2009 and July 2011, as Minister in charge of Environment and Forests, it fell on me to bring about changes in forest policy and administration, since this has been identified as a key factor in dealing with the issue of Naxal violence. One, the Naxals are exploiting the tribals, and two, the tribals themselves want peace, not war. The Naxals are using the tribal areas and issues for their tactical purposes. The terrain and the forests suit them for guerrilla warfare. They have spread their terror and ensured that the developmental activities are obstructed. The tribal cause which the Naxals espouse is only a mask to further their own agenda. The Malkangiri incident is a clear message from the tribals of the region that they want development and not Naxal terror. What is clear is that we need a two-track approach. One that deals with the leadership of the Naxals who wish to overthrow the Indian state and the other which focuses on the concerns of their people or they pretend or claim to serve. There is clearly a need to recognize tribal populations as victims, first of state apathy and discrimination, and then of the Naxal agenda. My firm belief is that a complete revamp of the administration and governance in tribal areas, especially in central and eastern India, is the pressing need of the hour. Andhra Pradesh has attempted to do this through its ITDA, the Integrated Tribal Development Agency model, but much more needs to be done. We must also come to grips with the sad reality that affirmative action programs like reservations have had a very marginal impact on the welfare of central and eastern Indian tribal communities. First, an overwhelming majority of these districts have substantial population of tribal communities. Second, an overwhelming majority of these districts have significant area under good quality forest cover. Third, a large number of these districts are rich in minerals like coal, bauxite, and iron ore. Fourth, in a large number of states, these districts are remote from the seat of power and have large administrative units. Fifth, a large number of districts are located in the tri-junction areas of different states. Let me make a couple of observations based on my personal experience on each of these five characteristics. On the size of administrative units, recently on a visit to Chhattisgarh, I discovered that the size of some blocks like Konta in Dantewara district or Orcha in Narayanpur district and Orgi in Sarguja district was equivalent to the size of some districts in some other states, and indeed equivalent to the size of some other states themselves. Given poor connectivity and poor infrastructure to begin with, this is a huge handicap 
to contend with by administrators. Rationalization of administrative units is entirely within the domain and powers of the state governments. The Chhattisgarh government has very recently decided to create five more districts in the Naxal-affected areas of the state, and this is a good step forward. 